I could stay like this Forever following you Just don't get too far And I'll be right where you are Abby here at Purple Cottage Crafts. Welcome back to another video here on my YouTube channel. This is going to be the second installment of my um, tea bag crafts playlist that I started. Now I've been crafting with tea bags for several years but I had never put any videos up or, or kind of tutorials or project share type things on my channel so I wanted to do that. I am a huge tea girl. I love my coffee. Don't forget I'm a Starbucks girl but um, I collect vintage teacups and teapots and the saucers. I'm just I love it. So I have tea pretty much every day. So this is just part of my um, closest stash that I could get of all my different tea bags, different sizes and different colors and stuff like that. The rest of mine are still packed um, in my craft stuff. But this is probably about maybe mm, maybe a week, two weeks worth of tea, I guess. Kaylee has a few in there too, so that's my daughter. Anyway, so um, the first video I did in that in that playlist um, is my slow stitch tea bag tuck spots is what I called it because it's kind of a combination of doing some slow stitching as well as doing some tea bag crafts so what I thought I would do is just make the, uh, the playlist uh, about the tea bags and the slow stitch is kind of just like an extra thing because I have a separate playlist just for slow stitching projects so I have four tea, um, tea bag pockets already done and I have two that I kind of gathered the material materials for and I'm going to um, uh, film myself you know putting those together so I wanted to start out with like the super super basic tea bag pocket because not everybody likes to have lots of layers and textures and things like that a lot of crafters and makers out there really like the um, clean and simple kind of look which is totally fine that's just not me <laughs> I just like to add lots of layers and details and stuff but you can definitely make this project into your own tastes in your own style and things like that so these here actually uh, uh, they're identical I believe. Anyway this is just one of the larger Lipton tea bags that you use for like making iced tea. Uh, my daughter accidentally bought the larger bags which I love because I love having this size as well. So these are just super super basic and simple. Um, just have some random stitching on the bottom with just some heavy duty thread. And then um, what I did is I made a faux tea bag tag for these and I'll pull this one out. This is just a coffee dyed piece of a chipboard from K and Company. Just did a little fun stitch there and kind of made my own faux tea bag tag. And this is just some coordinating fabric. Thought that was pretty. Just kind of did some stitching. And then on the bag here itself, let me see if I can get it to show up. Or is this a better example? I'm trying to find the one that's got a little bit better of a view here. Let's do this one. So on the what I did is. The tea bag, um, you know, when I took it apart to dump the tea grounds out, which I kept, and you'll see a project coming up with that, uh, is I just took like a small needle and I just rolled the top back to kind of make that, you know, kind of a paper curl look. Um, something I've been doing for a super long time in my scrapbooks and mixed media projects, and I know tons and tons of other crafters do it too. I just kind of wanted to sh uh, sh uh, share real quick how I did that in case you're new. It's not the best example. I have other ones I can. Um, show on my channel later. So that's, I just kind of did that and on the back side you can see the stitching and the knots which I think is kind of a cool look. And then I just simply stuck in one of these uh, chipboard tags that were coffee dyed and then made my own faux tag. I think they're both the same how I stitched them on there. A little bit different. So you can go really really simple and kind of um, more basic I guess you could say with your um, tea bag pockets. And then moving on up towards Abbeville here, <laughs> what I like, you can also go with um, some more detail. Let me zoom in a little bit here. I hope the lighting's okay. It is getting to be evening here. It is 6.49 here in Oregon. So the light's kind of fading. So this is a white tea bag. I don't remember the brand of tea. When I go back to edit the video, if I can remember, I'll put like a link to, or in the screen here 
what uh, brand and flavor the tea was in case you're looking for white tea bags. I don't know. But anyway, so here's this one. You can see the stitching I did on the side. This is the back side, of course. And I like how this looks. You can totally cut this off if you don't like that frayed. This is where I took, I gently took the tea bag apart to get the tea grounds out. I left the tea bag um, tag on. I think it looks cool. It's a, it's you know, it's just a nod to what the, what this originally was. And then on the front side here, I just did some of my layering, which is pretty. Um, uh, not, not like my signature, I don't want to say that, but like my style, I guess you could say. I love lots of layers and textures. I want it to be just visual or actually, you know, touching, you can kind of feel. So um, what I did, since I wanted this to be a pocket, is I just assembled um, the different layers in the paper doll on this one, and I stitched that all together, and then I used some score tape on the back side and stuck it to the front of the tea bag. I didn't want to stitch this onto the tea bag because then it would be closed and I couldn't use it as a um, pocket. So that's how I did that in case you're wondering. But you, you can kind of see the different layers in there. So you can definitely, this is a great, great project not to only recycle your tea bags, but, but to also kind of dig into your um, your little snippet stash. And this is one I just started since I, I don't know, maybe Christmas time? Uh, my other ones are still packed, but um, you have all kinds of, all of us, I know all of us crafters have little snippets and little bits and stuff left over, fabrics and trims and whatnot. And this is a great way to um, use those up if you're wanting to kind of um, do that. So I just stitched on, this is a Tim Holtz paper doll, and I just did stitching across her her um, uh, ballet dress there. And then I the way I got her stuck on here as well is I just took some um, white thread and just wrapped it around her legs. I think it looks kind of cute. So there's that. And then as far as um, little pockets inside or little pieces of paper, I just did some basic um, like cross stitching, I guess, the X stitching on the sides. This is some coffee dye paper. I call these my inspiration strips because they're strips of paper. So you can journal on these, um, whatever, doodle on them, whatever you want to do. So I have a couple of those in here. And this will hold more than just two. You can kind of see inside the tea bag there. But this is, I just put two in for now, so. This would be a great way to also tuck in some maybe like movie ticket stubs or a receipt from a coffee date or whatever for your junk journals, journaling, planners, all that kind of stuff. So this was the one I finished last night. This one's my favorite by far. And not by far, it's one of my favorites I should say. This is a larger tea bag. This is actually, oh, let me show you. I think I have one still in here. If not, I'll show you on those other... I think it's this one. Yeah, here it is. It's the larger iced tea bags that I shared with the more basic ones in the beginning of the video. So it looks like this when you take it apart and you get you know, dump the tea out of the grounds out. Looks like that. So what I did for this one is I just snipped off like this, and I just have like that section of it left. And then I've kept the ends I cut off because I can use those um, in another project. So that's where this came from. And what I did, since I cut on both ends, I just stitched the bottom of this using some sari silk. What I did is I opened up the sari silk and I and I set the tea bag inside, and it kind of cupped around it like that, like a create like a little flap, I guess you could say. And I just used some um, heavy uh, duty thread on there. And that's how I was able to seal it so I could put stuff in and it wouldn't slide out the bottom. And I left the tea tag bag or tea bag tag on, but I just wrapped around some coordinating uh, coffee dyed fabric. I think it looks kind of cute, but I'm not covering up the whole thing. You can still see it was a big low tea. And then on the front, just like this one here, I just did a bunch of layers of different um, snippets and laces. This one actually has some um, coffee dyed paper in it. And this is something that I also want to kind of um, share. You don't always have to have your um, printed text music sheets kind of running horizontal. You can definitely flip them around and have them on the vertical and it just kind of gives another kind of cool visual interest because it's going up and just set of like, like normal. I hope that makes sense. And so I just did some different layers of different laces and fabrics. This is some um, avocado dyed uh, cheesecloth, unbleached cheese, uh, cheesecloth, little scrap of some lace um, material. And I just did some stitching again, just to more more visual than anything else. Um, these stitches aren't like holding the whole piece together; they're just kind of extra. And then I just did some little um, kind of seed stitching along here, just for visual again. And then for this little girl, I just did um, use some of the cotton floss and wrapped around her ankles. 
I thought it kind of looked like leg warmers, but <laughs> I don't know if it looks like that to you guys. But that's kind of what I thought when I started stitching her on. And then um, this under part here, where you see these little tiny seed stitchings, this is across the whole entire base, which is this fabric here, the newsprint, and this pink fabric. So um, I did that across the whole thing, but you could it's partly covered up because of this little piece here, but that's okay. Um, it's just kind of, you know, it's there. And so I think that was really cute. And that's how I assembled the base layers together. And as far as the pocket part, I'll open this up for you so you can kind of get a peek inside there. So our little Bella is walking around the kitchen. I can hear her nails going click, 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 click. We have a mini dots in case you are new to my channel. So this is just some more um, coffee dyed paper. Um, I'll share in another. I'll share in another video um, this process and how I uh, what this was originally. And so I just did some real sim uh, simple stitching again. Just folded the paper down more for like visual interest than anything else, just to look kind of cool. And then there's that. You know, lots of room to journal on. I just used my pinking shears and made that little design. And then just another piece of the coordinating um, pink lace material. And I just did a bunch of random stis, uh, stitching on there. And I left the tails because I like how that looks. You of course can take it off if you like whenever you uh, make your own. So what I have are a couple other um, tea bags that I'm going to put together on camera. I'm probably going to do most of it process because, um, and I apologize for all my viewer, my um, viewers here, uh, if you've heard this a thousand and one times, I'm temporarily set up in our living room until um, my craft rooms are done. And um, so that's, I have to kind of work around the family schedule. So that's why um, if you're going to see more process, process portion heavy videos for me, that's why, because I can't like talk because they're, you know, making dinner or things like that. So let me get these up here out of the way for a moment. So what I have here, because Abby is the slowest crafter in the West, <laughs> and I fully admit it, and um, I just get lost in the details and stuff. So anyway, there's no rule that says you have to be like a super fast crafter, unless you're like in a crafting contest or something. Anyway, so what I've done is I went ahead and kind of pulled from my stash and um, picked out some different bits that I wanted to put on these two tea bags. So I wanted to have a pretty good representation of different types of tea bags. Now, technically these are all the three, these these are the same tea bag itself, but you know, they, they look different. I use different parts of them. And then this one is the white, it's kind of like a white tea bag. Then I have this one here. This is white too, but it's got a different shape to it. And this is a Lipton brand. Um, and then this next one here, kind of pull my layers off. This is one of the, um, I pretty, pretty sure it's the Celestial Seasonings, one of their teas, and um, I already started kind of stitching on the side. But this is the one, I'll show you what this looks like too. Let's see where to go here. Digging through my tea bags. All right, so there's an example. Um, it comes like this, and you tear them apart, of course, if you want to, unless you're making like a big pot and you can use both. And what I am doing is just flipped it over like this, and then I'm just stitching up this side here, and then I'll stitch on this side here, and then I'm going to have a pocket right here to put tags and whatever uh, whatever in. Same thing with this one too. So this one, because it's kind of like, uh, looks more like a handbag, like a bulky book bag or something, the shape of it, you can definitely put... Um, some thicker objects in here for like a junk journal, like maybe, you know, three or four tags or whatever you want to do. So that's a little bit different. So I wanted to kind of have a good representation of a variety of the tea bags that I have um, accessible to me at this point. So for this one, let's zoom in here a little bit. Doo -doo -doo. All right, so for this one, I selected these items here. I'll take the layers apart so you can kind of see. So my thought process, process is to have um, you know, the tea bag like that. Oops. I know it's hard on white on white. Sorry, guys. Um, this is just some um, text fabric that I got from Joann's. I'll try to um, find it. I got it a couple years ago. It was when we first moved to Florida, so I don't know if they still sell it or not. And what I did is I purposely cut it long like that, and I'm just doing this because I like how that looks. It's just kind of a fun little wonky kind of a thing. So I have that there. That's going to go. And then um, I just actually got this out before I start filming. This is just some more of the avocado dyed cheesecloth. And then this is some really pretty fabric. I want to put some purple in because hello, a purple girl, as we all know. Unless you're new to my channel, you will find out quickly because I talk about purple and I wear purple and my nails will always be purple. So I'm gonna kind of trim this down here. Actually, let's see, let me do a little bit overhang 
in case I want to fray the edges a little bit. So we'll just snip it off like right about there. This goes into my little snippet bucket. And then we'll have that like this. I'll probably stick it down there. And then we have the cheesecloth and the fabric. Kind of like that. Bella, you're making noise. Um, this little snippet of um, a doily I took apart. And then this is just one of the um, fabric flowers. This is white. So I'm going to fray the edge of this. You'll see me doing that too. I like it when it looks tattered and stuff. So kind of like this assemblage is what I'm thinking. Something like that. Um, again, you can make yours a little bit um, less fussy if you want to. This is just how I like my stuff to look when I'm crafting. So for this one, this is the other tea bag I showed you. I folded up. This is some really cool material that I got at... Um, St. Vinny's, one of my local thrift shops. I will um, link the playlist for those videos in the description box below in, in case you're curious as to how I, um, my different findings from the thrift shop when I'm looking for secondhand pieces to use my crafting. So this was like in a four and a half yard chunk and I just cut out little pieces. This is the um, salvage edge right here and I just took my tweezers because my distressing tools are still packed and I just kind of fray this a little bit just so it wasn't just like a straight clean line. So I thought I would play with like doing some denim kind of using more not that you can't like blue when you're a female I don't mean it that way but like more not boyish but not so much the pinks and lavenders and that kind of stuff. This is a different color palette. This is just a scrap of some lace trim there. And then this same thing here. Just laying it kind of like that, I'm thinking. And then this is from a really cool, um, uh, I don't know where it's at to show you. It's a really cool piece I got from an estate sale. And I try to not use it too much because once it's gone, it's kind of gone type of thing. And then I just uh, stitched on the back to make a little loopy dupes. I used this right here from Hobby Lobby. It's some hemp cord. There's a SKU number. Oh, sorry. In case you're wanting to um, write that down, you can pause the video. And this is the one that I purchased, again, from Hobby Lobby for $2.99. I think their stuff was on sale that day. I can't remember. It's been a while. And so I just stitched that to the back. And I'm thinking just to kind of put that there. And then um, somehow stitching little boy on. I think. I'm not 100% sold on... I'm using him. This is the smallest one that I have left in Timmy's paper dolls. So I'm not sure if I like that really. I don't know. We'll kind of see. I mean, I, I do, I think. I think it looks cute. So anyway, oh, forgot about my little paper. Um, this is from a Tim Holtz uh, die. It's the postage die, and I'll link that below. This is just one piece of it. I am so sorry, you guys. I am so zoomed in that I didn't realize I wasn't even in frame. I apologize. This is what it looks like. And it comes with it comes with the perforation. You can get this size. The set comes with this size and like a larger postal size. And you can just run any kind of paper you want through your dye machine. Um, I just stamped this um, on some coffee paper, and that's what it looks like. So it's a really cool, fun die. So I, I definitely will link it below, so you can go check it out if you want to get it um, yourself. So there's that. So I'm thinking that kind of a look. I thought that looked kind of cool. So what I'm going to do is. I'll go ahead and get myself set up. I'm going to go ahead and thread a couple of other needles so you're not watching me thread a needle because that's not very exciting. And then I'll come back on and I'll either talk through some of it or I just do the process video as I mentioned. So I will see you all in the next clip. Okay, so I got my other needle threaded and I'm ready to work on this one. So I'm going to kind of put this off to the side and I just because I have these elements laid out, that doesn't mean I'm not going to maybe change my mind, add something, take something away. So I kind of think about that when my um, different assemblages are off to the side, my different pieces of the project and whatnot. So this is this thread heel. How many times can I say this in one sentence? Um, I was poking the needle on these, um, so if I can't really see the information, but I got these from Walmart or Joann's, I can't remember, but I will try to find these online randomly somewhere, and I'll link it below if you want to have that particular thread, and I doubled it up just so it would, um, I like the way it looks, a little bit thicker, focus, there we go, I'm just going to focus or not, light's kind of wonky right now, but yeah, so I just did some double, double thread there, and I have, I think I finished this one, this one side, and I started doing it when I was watching a movie, and I was like, oh wait, I should save this for my um, tea bag tutorial video that I, um, my series, I should say, of videos. Let me kind of zoom out this a little bit. It's so awkward because the way I have to have the um, tripod set up in here um, on the table, so um, sometimes it's kind of hard for me to um, work when 
with you know like out of frame and stuff and I'm trying not to do that so sorry I should have had that done before I turned the camera back on this isn't very exciting either so I'm gonna leave the tails a little bit long like I said because I can always come back and cut them if I don't like how they look once the um, pocket is completely done I might have to flip my op light on here in a minute it's not the best look when I do that use my op light but you know at least you can see still sort of this kind of weird end of day early evening kind of lighting going on so just a real simple stitching up the side here I'll probably come back and do um, oh that's what I was gonna do that's why I didn't tie it off oh well I was gonna go back down on this side and just add some more little seed stitching but that's okay I can go back and do that not a big deal so let's go to the other side alright so this is my front so this will be my back and um, you can definitely do some decorative stitching um, I am I wouldn't say I'm like a green, super green um, slow stitcher learning like um, different embroidery knots and stuff. I am still in the beginning phase, I think. But um, so I, I've been practicing all kinds of different um, embroidery stitches and um, just some different flowers and stuff like that. So I can incorporate those types of um, stitch stitching into my um, other crafting projects that I do, whether it be junk journals, tomes, um, cards, scrapbook layouts, mixed media pieces, um, home decor, that kind of stuff. So um, so for me, I'm still just kind of messing around with just doing kind of like some seed stitching and some random stitching and whatnot. So if you're if you can be patient with me. Sorry, I forgot to turn my phone down before I started filming. Sorry about that. Um, I promise, promise you in the near future you'll see some fancier stitching for me other than this so it's just been a lot of fun I have completely completely fallen down the rabbit hole of this whole uh, slow stitching uh, movement and that is a thing it's there's a 22,000 plus people uh, posts on Instagram and the hashtag is slow stitching I, I stumbled across this on one of my nights of um, sifting through Instagram and I will link that, that playlist for my slow stitching. That way you can kind of hear. Not It's not my full story of, of how I came across slow stitching and what it kind of means to me, why I love it so much. I need to actually film um, a face video about that because it relates, it kind of ties into uh, my life with dealing with chronic pain and what a huge role crafting in general um, does to um, kind of help get me through the rough days and whatnot. But um I um, just, uh, I love it. It's just, it's such a cool um, kind of, I don't want to say craft or I don't know how to word it, but it's just a really cool um, element to throw into the mix, I guess you could say, for my crafting. You don't have to just do it on fabric. It can be on paper. I'm using a, a tea bag for crying out loud. You can stitch on whatever you want. And it's, it's just more about the act of stitching than, um, you know, kind of like a therapeutic type of a thing, like, some people like to do the adult coloring books and stuff. It's very calming, very relaxing, that type of thing. So I know it's I'm stitching by hand, but the slow stitching is, you know, the name of the movement and stuff. So, and I actually just, I'm getting ready to um, finish editing um, my first uh, block of the month forge stitching from Lisa Matic um, packaging. So I, I uploaded some photos on my Instagram. And if you're not following me there, I would love it if you could check out my Instagram and follow me if you like what I share. But I do a lot of sneak peeks of projects, videos, photos, family stuff, pictures of my adorable grandson. Gonna throw it up here because he's so cute. Um, and you know, my love and slash obsession with purple <laughs> and tea and stuff like that. So it's just kind of like a mix. It's mostly crafty, but I also have family stuff in there too, like, you know, other things I like. I don't want to manage a bunch of different social media platforms. So I, I have two email addresses, which is enough for me. Then my website, which we're working on. And then my Instagram, uh, my YouTube channel. I have a blog. Um, I haven't really, I kind of, once I kind of got more focused on you, making more YouTube, uh, YouTube videos and kind of focusing on my channel and stuff, I kind of, uh, slacked off on the blogging but I will definitely make that accessible from my website because I have a lot of tutorials on there um, I'm on the design team for score pal so I have a lot of tutorials 
for them. I've done some work with May Arts um, a handful of times, um, Lenny Blooms, uh, Lenny Blooms, excuse me, Crafting Ireland, all kinds of um, tutorials and videos and things that I have on that um, on my YouTube channel. So, or excuse me, my blog. And I don't want to lose those because it's a lot of work when you do step out tutorials for blogging. And if you don't know what that means, hope you don't mind. I'm just like randomly chatting as I'm doing this. There's not much I can really say except I'm just stitching on here. Um, so what was I just saying? Oh, so step out photos, like tutorials. When you look at a magazine, whether it be crafting, home decor, DIY, whatever, whenever, um, like what I would do, for example, if I was making this a step out photo tutorial, like a written, like on a website or a blog, is I would stop like right here and I would take a picture of what I'm doing and then I had like a blurb about it. Then the next step would be, okay, I'm gonna start stitching this part down and I would take a picture pretty much each phase that was critical to the completion of the project, if that makes sense. And uh, I, I love doing it. I mean, you know, I didn't have to blog or anything and I love being on the different design teams and stuff. It's just really cool to kind of, um, you know, work with different products and th things from companies and, um, and different materials that you like to actually craft with. So it's just, a, it just takes longer than me doing a video because I have to stop and take pictures, make sure it looks okay and, editing the photos down to where it's mostly focus, focusing just on the project, not peripheral things around my workspace and stuff. So I don't want to lose all that. It's it, it's basically like a virtual um, scrapbook or uh, what's what I'm looking for? Not resume, a portfolio, so to speak. So um, I don't know how I started talking about that, but <laughs> oh, Instagram, I think <laughs> it kind of led me on that part. So but anyway, it's just it's just a lot of fun to you know, share this kind of stuff with all of you and make in some new crafty friends. And I, I want, want to give another huge welcome to all of my new subscribers. I refer to all of you as my crafty friends here on YouTube. And I want to thank you because my channel is just like been growing like leaps and bounds. And I, it makes me so happy that um, you all want to uh, listen to me, listen to me ramble on and sharing my projects and you know, um, crafting videos I do, like um, unboxings and stuff like that. So it just means so much to me. Now I do have a playlist on my channel that is not crafty at all, but it's, I feel it's um, important to have it on my channel because it affects my crafting. It affects every aspect of my life. And I'm not gonna turn this into my um, trigeminal neuralgia awareness video or anything. I just wanted to mention that because I do have a lot of new subscribers who found me through the different um, facial online facial um, TNA um, facial group. Um, my mouth is not wanting to cooperate today. It's life with a half numb face. It's ugh. anyway. So different um, online support groups. Some on Facebook. Some through the Facial Pain Association. Um, through the actual trigeminal neuralgia association. Things like that who um, find my videos because of the keywords and whatnot. And so I have a lot of people who watch my videos for those types of updates. So that's why I like to kind of mention that from time to time because I want to acknowledge them because some of, of the, and watch my crafty videos too. They like to find different ways to um, help with their pain, like their different distraction techniques. And I do videos on that, Th different things that work for me. Um, as far as like, you know, um, trying to help distract me, myself from the, my pain, a lot like doing this today. Um, you know, I just, I find this so therapeutic. So anyway, I'm probably going to do, after I finish this last little bit of stitching here, I'll probably put the rest on um, uh, Abby process with some music because I'm really having some difficulty with my speech right now. Um, I know a lot of you don't tell me we don't notice it, whatever. And I, and I, um, appreciate you giving me that feedback. I am very self-conscious about it. And so I feel my, um, the numbness being a little more pronounced right now. And the fact that this has been almost 12 minutes of me just doing sewing this one side of the tea bag. I'm, I'm just a slow crafter, you guys. It, I have to accept it <laughs> and just kind of run with it. So I'm going to go ahead and put the rest of this on process or else we'll be here till um, the 4th of July. So I will see you all in the next clip.
open the lighting to all right and I don't remember where I left off because um, it's been a couple days since I w last worked on this and I could look at the prior footage but I'm not going to <laughs> so I just kind of wanted to check in and kind of tell you where I'm almost completed with this particular um, tea bag and then I'll move on to the um, this last one here that I'm gonna be doing for the video I'm hoping lighting's okay all that jazz okay so what I completed here is um, just stitching the boy on I just did it where uh, trying to find something better to point at let me just use this thing. you can actually see let's try this okay I feel like I'm a school teacher look on this part right here so right here I just stitched um, on the band of the boy's hat right there were some of this um, really pretty colorway blues and then I just did some stitching around this is just decorative it this um, um, crocheted flowers are already attached to the background piece but just thought it'd be kind of cute to have that and this is some random stitching there just visual interest more than anything and you can see some of the smaller seed stitching here and on this side and the loopy loops and I think that's pretty much it and that's the back side how it looks so what I will do is just add some score tape and I only was able to find a couple of my rolls um, but this I have score tape that'll like one swipe and it'd be covered but I'm just gonna use a few strips of this one and I'll adhere it to the front of this tea bag and I might I might just add a little bit more blue to it I might come back and do um, a couple of little either like a little cluster of um, uh, seed stitching right there or maybe do some X's or something I don't know we'll see how it goes uh, and then I'm going to dig into my little stash of paper let me zoom out here a little bit then I'll dig into my this little bag of um, paper scraps and whatnot that I have to make a couple tags and I will film myself doing that I might come back on and talk through it we'll kind of see how um, how it goes here so I'm gonna go ahead and because I can still stitch on this with this on there so that's what I'll do I'm gonna go ahead and add my score tape to this and my husband used my tape scissors there they are these are just cheapos from Dollar Tree I like to have separate I have separate um, uh, scissors for different reasons like I'm sure all of us crafters and stuff out there do so, so I like to I know you can tear this as paperback I don't like that I don't I don't uh, I don't like how it looks when I tear it I, I can't explain it. it's just a quirk of mine so I always just cut mine but you definitely can just tear it it's you know it's paper paper backed tape so and then what I do is I just take my bone folder and I um, just really press the score tape into the fabric into the grooves especially um, on the back side where there are some the knots from stitching and stuff so let's do that that way I'm not putting so much pressure onto the front the image and it like bends it or whatever and I can just really get some good pressure because it you know sinks down into the fabric of the of the towel that I'm using so and I'm sure we're not um, none of us are surprised that I happen to have a purple towel here <laughs> so I was folding laundry down here earlier and I was like I'm just gonna swipe this because it's sitting right, right next to me so to kind of get the tape off yeah see but it, it will stick to this I promise because that's what I've been doing so let's kind of go ahead and just smush this down a little bit more and then I will get it peeled off and we'll get it stuck to the actual tea bag itself and then the last step for this one is just to make a few um, little tag inserts
on to the last tea bag um, pocket and I will show you all of them again up close at the very end of the video, especially the ones that I'm working on in this video. So what I'm, I'm doing here, just kind of laying out uh, um, kind of like the, I guess the formation or, of the layers of this last tea bag pocket. So what I want to do, because this tea bag is a little bit longer, the string and then the, the branding, I don't want to get rid of this. When it's, Sometimes I'll fall off when I'm, um, you know, trying to open them carefully, then that's fine. But I don't intentionally take them off um, because I, I like it. It's kind of adds to what the, you know, the substrate is, the tea bag. So I don't want it to be quite that long. So I'm going to take this and wrap it over like that. And then when I get ready to um, put down the little, you know, fabric assemblage there, then I will just put the score tape on the back side and then I will just lay it down flat and then this um, will um, kind of lay this way so and I want it to be on this side not this side because you see how this might be hard because it's kind of white on white um let's try this, this box here see if that, that shows it so when I lay this down you can see that the um there's you know like this little bit of a lip right there I want that to be on the front kind of like you know, the opening of a pocket or, well, it is a pocket to heavy, but like the opening of like a, a file folder, that kind of thing, tab folder or whatever. So what I've done is put on some of this beautiful purple colorway here. And the, I kept the little packages. Again, I got this whole set of this from um, Hobby Lobby. And then these are the little branding tags that were on that one. If you want to write that down in case you're looking for it somewhere and let me reach over sorry my pardon my reach here let me show these two real quick so these are the two bags oop focus these are the two bags that i purchased from hobby lobby so you can kind of see the colors these are like solids in this one and then these have the you know the colorways in it so just let you know where i got that so i what i want to do next because i kind of already kind of figured out in my head how i wanted the assemblage of this one to be i'm gonna kind of get used to that being off to the side and I have this fabric that's got some script on it I got it from Joann's forgive me if I already mentioned that in the intro part of the video I don't remember it's been a couple days since um, I started working on this and kind of doing this and I, I'm making the, the fabric yeah I could cut it to the right height but I like the this look of it I like that it's kind of off to the side it's a little bit wonky and it gives another layer of visual interest so I'm just gonna put this down see how I like like it for sure and then um so this one and then I think I added this bit of lace in there somewhere I'm trying to remember why how I had it I could be completely not putting this together right. and I know my hands are in the way I'm sorry it's a small it's a small little thing here and then let's see if I like this oh my fabric that's what's missing my other piece of fabric and then this is just some of the unbleached cheesecloth underneath that's this little scrappy bit of some beautiful purple fabric see if I like that and then this on top here I think going this away and then the flower I want this little bit of scrap here too so this is what I talk about when I get myself lost in the details and all the layers and stuff I, I enjoy making stuff with like lots of layers and textures and I kind of get myself a little bit lost in the details and creating the different layers and stuff. So that definitely contributes to why it takes me a little bit longer to work on things. And most of my crafty friends, I don't think you have to be like, you know, um, a speedy crafter to be a good crafter. It's just, I'm just, you know, I always worry about it. I don't know why it's silly um, because I'm just not very fast. But anyway, so let's moving on here. So I, do I like that? I'm going to put the lace maybe at the top. Let's try that. See if I like how that looks. Let's do it on this side. So it kind of curls a little bit more naturally down. But I want to cover my purple stitching. Oh, I'll just stitch this to the purple. That's what I'll do. Okay, so let's do that. Let's get that part started. Let's get that party started. Okay, so I have the fabric flipped over like I showed you, or you know, folds on itself. And then this is that little bit of lace, and I already have some um, thread ready on the needle. I am just focusing on getting the materials to um, be stuck together with the thread. So I'll do like a combination of like some seed stitching, just some regular, you know, stitching, whatever you call that. And then um, I might do some of the um, more of the X's like I did on this one here, like the cross stitch. I might do some of those. We'll see. Just kind of depends. So 
I'm still practice, still doing lots of practicing on some of the different embroidery flowers and things because I really, really, really want to start incorporating those types of um, elements into my crafting projects, whether it's a slow stitching project or not, like a card. Of course, you can slow stitch a card if you want to, but I think you kind of know what I'm saying here. What's the matter, Bella? Little pills down here underneath the table. It took her a while to realize that when Mama's sitting here at the table, I'm not always eating because I'm sitting at the dining room table. <laughs> That's where I've been crafting for the last couple months. And so now she's like, okay, all she has up there is paper and thread, fabric. I'm out of here. So now this is probably going to take me a few minutes to do this. I'm sure it's not very exciting to watch me just do this back and forth, back and forth. And just um, finish this on um, as a process. And then I'll kind of keep going along with the different layers of the um, of this last tea bag that we're going to do in this video so